This video will explain you about the procedure of lumbar puncture or a spinal tap and a safe and successful method of performing it by using a 24G needle for collection of the cerebrospinal fluid. There are three main purposes and types of performing a lumbar puncture. First of all is a therapeutic lumbar puncture which is performed to decrease the intracranial pressure or the ICP wherein 15 to 30 mLs of CSF is drained out at its normal speed. Remember, never ever increase the speed of draining CSF because this could lead to brain coning which means herniation of the brain through foramen magnum and this displacement of cerebral tissue may disturb the conscious state by direct or indirect pressure on the diencephalon and the brainstem. Elsewise, therapeutic spinal tapping is done to inject small amounts of medication into the CSF. Second type is a diagnostic lumbar puncture which is performed for assessment of any underlying neurological medical conditions in an individual like encephalitis or meningitis or differential diagnosis of the respective types of meningitis that is bacterial, viral, fungal, parasitic or a case of non-infectious meningitis. While the third one is done for biomedical research purposes on healthy volunteers for Alzheimer's disease. Now let us look at the spinal levels of performing a lumbar puncture. It is generally performed at three levels that is between L3 and L4, L4 and L5 and between L5 and S1. L3 and L4 is the most preferential site of choice. It is mostly performed at this level so that any injury to the spinal cord is avoided because in 94% of the cases spinal cord terminates by L1 and in the remainder 6% of the cases it terminates by L2. Position and aspects of performing a lumbar puncture. There are two ways of positioning a patient, a left lateral recumbent position or a sitting upright position and this depends on the patient and a practitioner's individual preferences. A sitting upright position is generally used when lateral position has failed. In either ways, you want the patient to arch their backs and flex at the hip in order to increase the distance between respective spinous process so that the needle penetrates easily. If an upright sitting position, make the patient sit on the edge of the bed and ask them to rest their feet on a stool to bring their thighs towards their abdomen and rest their arms on the table in front of them to roll their shoulders and upper back forwards. When making a patient lie left laterally, the patient's legs should be flexed at the knee and pulled in towards their chest and the upper thorax should be curved forward in almost a fetal position. Also consider giving benzodiazepines like lorazepam to anxious cases to help improve the procedure. You can have two approaches while advancing the needle inwards. Firstly is a medial aspect approach wherein you have to cross five layers that is the skin, subcute, supraspinous ligament, interspinous ligament and finally the ligamentum flavum to enter the subarachnoid space but while doing it paramedially you could skip two layers of the supraspinous and the interspinous ligament. Now what are the basic tools and apparatus that you need to perform a lumbar puncture? A manometer, a kidney dish, sterile drapes, sterile bowl with a gauze, gauze with antiseptic solution, syringe for local anesthesia, forceps, some towel clips, sterile containers for CSF collection and a spinal needle is all what you need to perform this procedure. Now how to use a spinal needle is the final question. Remember that a spinal needle comes with a stylet in place and as a rule the bevel should be placed longitudinally to the dural fibers. I repeat, the bevel should be placed longitudinally to the dural fibers. So if the patient is in lateral lying position, the bevel should be up, while if the patient is in upright sitting position, the bevel is to the sideways. Moving ahead, let's discuss the necessary precautions that must be taken during this procedure. A lumbar puncture is not recommended in patients with focal neurological deficit, spinal malformations, skin infections in lumbar area. If any posterior fossa mass lesion, any evidence of intracranial lesion with mass effect, a midline shift or a poor visualization of the fourth ventricle or a quadrigeminal cistern is revealed in a CT scan or MRI before the first lumbar puncture, then one must avoid the procedure. If any patient is taking any sorts of the blood thinners like warfarin, dabigatrin, rivaroxaban, aspirin, clopidogrel or tinzaparin, please ask the patient not to use it before the procedure. Now please pay attention to one of the most important segments of this video which is procedure. 
First of all, put on your gallon and gloves, have a mask as well. Next, clean the skin beginning with the area where you are going to perform the puncture and then moving out laterally in concentric motion with the help of betadine and chlorhexidine after cleaning it with sterilium. And I was taught to repeat the sequence of cleaning thrice, that is first with a rubbing alcohol or sterilium and then with 10% poured on iodine or betadine and then placing a drape to get a sterile field ready for you. Now if the patient is lying in right lateral perpendicular position, palpate the left posterior superior iliac crest and when you find the edge, mark it and then go to the contralateral side and repeat the same. This would create the supracrystal plane and when you connect both these lines, you are exactly at the L4 L5 junction and in neonates or prematures, if you remember that, spinal cord could end lower at L3. So let us try beginning from low that is from L4 and L5 and later on you could go up if it fails. Now choose your spinal needle. As mentioned earlier, a 24G is a standard size, but depending on the thickness of the subcutaneous tissue and etc., that will dictate you how big or long of a spinal needle you would need. In children, try avoiding long needles since you could enter further inside and unnecessarily damage the intervertebral discs and things in front of the vertebral body like the inferior vena cava or the descending aorta. Also stay cognizant about the stylet that is fully engaged in the needle and remember about occluding all the openings so that you do not introduce the skin cells into subarachnoid space to avoid infection or epidermal cells that could potentiate into epidermoids. Before going in you could use lidocaine for local anesthesia. Keep your tubes ready and keep the manometer in place so that you could measure the opening and the closing pressure. To set up the manometer, connect two pieces of the tubing so that you are able to measure pressure more than 30 cm of water. Now connect the three-way stop cock at the base and to there will your spinal needle connect. You must make sure that both these ends, that is for spinal needle and manometer are open. Now start going in slowly, try staying midline and imagine that you are aiming right towards the belly button or the umbilicus. Make sure you cross the supraspinatus ligament connecting spinous processes and penetrate the ligamentum flavum connecting lamina of the adjacent vertebrae. So ideally you may get these two pops. Now keep removing stylet intermittently to check the CSF because you do not always feel those pops of ligaments. Once you start getting the CSF, take the manometer and measure the pressure and then turn open the three-way stop cock to collect the fluid and once done, drain the CSF at its normal speed into the collection tubes, ideally into three different collection tubes. Once done, remove off the spinal needle and make sure no CSF is coming out. If it does, pinch the skin and take a band-aid and pull it tightly across the wound. Once all of it is done, you have successfully completed the procedure. Let's wind this topic by giving you a brief on post lumbar puncture. Ask the patient to lie flat for at least 30 minutes to avoid headache. Advise drinking plenty of fluids. A mild pain at the site of injecting or a headache is normal and wears off after a day or so. And they could also take over-the-counter acetaminophen or ibuprofen. Remember, it is generally a low-risk procedure and if you do it following this way, I guarantee you, you are no less than a master. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please do share and subscribe for more.